Hey everyone, this is going to be a quick review video for the test over loops. Now, first off, we've got a couple of terms just review back over. You should have heard most, if not all, of these in the lecture videos prior. Uh, but counter, uh, a counter is essentially just that variable that counts things. So if I make, you know, an int variable or something, and I were to go in and make a loop, you know, while bear is less than five or something like that. And then I just say bear plus plus. Well, that's the counter, this bear plus plus here. Now, uh, an infinite loop would occur if I took that out. So if I don't have the bear plus plus, the in condition never ends or never is never true. Uh, so an infinite loop would basically just go on and on forever. Now each time this loop does go through its run, its, uh, its loop, its iteration is what it's called. Uh, so if this were to go here, you know, that's zero now, let's say. So we start at zero, it's going to be zero, we're going to run through, that's one iteration. Now it's one. So we go through, one's less than five, it keeps going, now it's two. Each one of those is an iteration. This particular structure, or a for loop, or however we wanna do it, are called loop structures. They allow us to loop code multiple millions, billions of times, uh, however many are needed, infinitely, even if we want to. Now, if I had a variable up here, you know, int n equals five or something, and I did that, well, the n would be what's called a sentinel value. I actually don't often mention that. I've never really talked about it that much because it's never really needed that often, but uh, I can have that variable right here, and then I can just change it at the top of the program, and it will essentially, as we're going through, this is the value that watches for it to hit, you know, this n, n result, so to speak. Uh, so once it hits that value, it ends. Now we got scope. If I declare a variable inside here, then it only exists inside these braces. If I declare a variable here, however, it exists even in these braces and after these braces and you know wherever else. Uh, so the scope of a variable is just where you define it matters. If I define it here, it's considered a local variable to this loop, right? Only this loop can see it. Once I leave this loop, this variable doesn't exist anymore. If I tried to print it, it's gonna tell me it can't do it because it doesn't exist. But I can print these, which would be considered in this case, global variables. Every if statement and loop and whatever I put down under this, we'll be able to see these variables at the very top because they're global. Uh, if I put a variable inside one of these boxes or these, bra these bra braces here, uh, then it will only know of this variable inside this brace. <clears throat> now, of course, it'll also reset that variable to nine every single time. And as soon as I hit this brace, it doesn't exist anymore. It throws it away. It's gone. Now, as far as what you're gonna have to do, of course, you'll have terms like what I've just discussed. You'll have uh, some code to read. Maybe there may be a little loop or something on the test and I may ask you, hey, there's something wrong with this. Can you fix it? Uh, of course, you will see some loops as well. Let's just, uh, I'm just gonna shorthand this, but if I were to print meh uh, plus bear, you know, well, it's C++, so uh, it would be, you know, fair or whatever. So I'll do it properly. There we go. So if I were to do that, I'm gonna assume all that works. Uh, what would this loop print at the end of the day? Well, what most people would do is, uh, not most people, but I always have a couple people who would do this. Well, they'll say, uh, meh, zero, and they'll stop. This loop is going to go five times, zero through four. So it's going to print that, 
And that's the answer I'm going to expect to see. If I see that and only that, or just meh without the number, then if the question was worth, let's say, 10 points, you'd get 2 at best, if that. Uh, so when you look at a, a loop question, the first thing you have to ask is, one, how many times is this thing going to loop? And two, what is it going to do each time it does that? So in this case, I can see it's going to loop, you know, for zero, for one, for two, for three, for four. So what's going to happen when it's zero? What's going to happen when it's one? What about two or three or four? Uh, that's essentially what you're going to see. Now, of course, uh, program assignment, you'll have to make some loops. It won't be anything horrendously difficult, like a whole bunch of nested upon nested loops. Uh, but you should know how to make a couple of loops, uh, depending on what I'm asking. Uh, most of the questions at the end of the test, as always, usually don't take too long. Uh, but I will say that I, this test uh, in particular, the loop test, does tend to be one of the harder tests for people. Uh, so just keep that in mind, just because it's a lot more complicated. Well, that is your basic rundown of the test that we're going to be having. Uh, so if you have any questions or anything in particular, uh, go ahead and let me know.